How you love me. It's amazing. And I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. And I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Who am I? And who am I that you are mindful of me? Thank you, Lord, that you hear me when I call. And is it true that you are thinking of me? And how you love me? It's amazing, and I am a friend of God, I am a friend of God, and I am a friend of God, he calls me friend, and I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God, I am a friend of God, he calls me friend, God Almighty, Lord of glory, you have called me friend, how gracious you are Lord. God Almighty, Lord of glory, you have called me friend. And God Almighty, Lord of glory, you have called I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. And I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. And I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God, he calls me friend. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> How many believe that the Lord's grace is enough? Amen. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. You wrestle with the sinner's heart. You lead us by still waters and to mercy. And nothing can keep us apart. And so remember your people. Remember your children. Remember your promise, O oh God. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. Great is your love and 
justice, God. You use the weak to lead the strong. You lead us in the song of your salvation. And all your people sing along. So remember your people, remember your children, remember your promise, oh God. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. You are Lord. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. And so remember your people. Remember your children. Remember your promise, oh God. The Lord, He is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> These are the days of Elijah, declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the days of your servant, Moses, righteousness being restored. And these are the days of great trials, of famine and darkness and sore. So we are the voice in the desert, crying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun, and at the trumpet's call, so lift your voice, it's the year of jubilee, and now to Zion's hill, salvation comes. We rejoice with you, Lord. And these are the days of Ezekiel. These are the days of Ezekiel, the dry bones becoming as flesh. And these are the days of your servants, David, rebuilding the temple of praise. And these are the days of the harvest, the fields are all as wide in the world. And we we are the laborers in your vineyard, declaring the word of the Lord. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. And at the trumpet's call, so lift your voice, this year of jubilee. And now to Zion's hill, salvation comes. Oh. There's no God like Jehovah, none like him. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 There's none like him. 
Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun at the trumpet's call. So lift your voice, this year of jubilee, and now to Zion's hill, salvation comes. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. Uh, at the trumpet's call, so lift your voice. It's the year of jubilee, and now to Zion's hill, salvation comes. Who was, and who is, and who is to come? We believe. Who was, and who time who was and who is and who is to come give them praise if you believe amen we praise you lord now you may now take your seats i'll turn it over to pastor randy Good morning, Saints. We'll do some announcements here real quick. Uh, we may have had a little bit of shortage on the handouts today. They're kind of nice. We will have them at least by next week, I believe, though. Um, first thing on March 1st and on the 15th and the 29th, we've got three of the AM Women's Bible Studies uh, this month at Sister Kathy's house at 11 a.m. And then there's an evening women's Bible study on March 25th at 6 p.m. here at the church. Uh, a men's morning Bible stu study every Thursday at 10 a.m. here in, at the youth room. It's the trailer up on the hill. Um, there's a men's outing on Saturday, March the 13th. Uh, more details coming soon. You'll see Pastor Danny about that. Uh, parenting class, March 21st, 4 to 6 p.m., hosted by Pastor Rick and Kathy. Uh, baptism class on March 21st, uh, should be right after church, with baptism the fi following Sunday on the 28th. So I know of one we've got so far. If there's more that would like to be baptized, please contact us here at the church. And ministry meeting on the last Wednesday of the month, on March 31st. So there will be no regular service. Um, there will be a ministry meeting, though. Anybody that's involved in ministries here, whether it be teaching kids or, or what, or cleaning up outside, ushering, whatever, you're involved, you come for that one at 7 p.m. Uh, then just a reminder about the church app and Play Store online it's got a logo kind of like what it's behind me here on it so uh, I think that's it so at this time we'll dismiss the kids back to their classes and don't forget to put your you got your ties stick it in the box so teachers and kids they're going back and then I'll turn it over to Pastor Rick today How's everybody doing this morning? Yeah, you guys all awake, alive, breathing, moving, walking. Um, why don't we stand up right now? We're going to stand up and we're going to read God's word and then we're going to pray. 
and we're going to ask God to bless this service. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, please turn to 1 Corinthians. So we are going to be in not a, a new book, but it is a new book for us going into this year uh, in the book of 1 Corinthians. We just finished up uh, the book of John, so we are now in 1 Corinthians. So uh, I look forward to this. Uh, I look forward to all the next few months, actually. It's probably going to take us. Uh, quite a bit of time to get through this next book here in 1 Corinthians. There's a lot in here. There's a lot of things that are happening in this church. And um, so let's uh, begin here. And we're just going to read from verses 1 through 3. All right. So if you guys are good, that's all I'm going to do today from verses 1 through 3. And it says here, Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and Sosthenes, our brother. To the church of God, which is at Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ, Jesus called to be saints. With all who in every place call on the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, both, both theirs and ours, grace to you and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, God, that you are not only uh, seated up on high, Lord God, but you are seated enthroned in our hearts. And Father, this morning as we give you this time, as we give you this next few moments, Lord, may we not allow any distractions to come into our minds, Lord, that the enemy would steal uh, the seed that is planted today. But God, that it would produce fruit in our lives. So Lord, help us to see not just in the ministry of Paul here, but God, in the church of Corinth and how we can apply it into our lives, Lord. We thank you, God, for this, uh, this morning and for your word. And we put it at, it is the utmost highest authority, Lord. There's nothing greater than your word. And Lord, may we give heed to it in Jesus' name. And the church of God said, amen. 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 You guys can go ahead and take your seats now. Uh, so... Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, um, this letter here that Paul uh, is writing, he's writing to a church that has a lot of issues, amen. How many guys know that churches have issues? And how many guys know that churches have issues because churches have people in them? And do you know that people bring issues into the church? Amen? Man, it got real quiet, didn't it? <laughs> and that's the reality. You know, the reality is there's demographics going on here. There's new things that, are, that have taken place. There's a transition from how people used to live and how they're trying to adopt a new way of living. Amen? And how many of you guys know that's really the Christian life? It's adapting and adopting, being adopted, amen, into this, you know, new life, into this new way of being. And, and the church of Corinth here, uh, man, they have a lot going on. There's so much going on here. But Paul here, he starts off in this letter to the Corinthians. And... Um, you know, normally when you see a letter being written, it's, it's being written in such a way to where um, it's usually the person is at the end of the letter, right? Sincerely, Paul. You know, the letter's written in the body and the context of the letter. And then, and then Paul. Paul starts here, and in, in ancient times, the way they would do it is they would start with the name. And Paul here, he starts with Paul, called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. Through the will of God, and Sosthenes, our brother. So Paul, he had an extensive history of contact here with the city of Corinth, beginning with when he established a church in Corinth, coming there for, after Athens and, and staying there uh, a year and, and a half. And we read that in the book of Acts chapter 18, where Paul starts the church and things that are happening within the church and he wrote this uh, a letter to the Corinthians in Corinth from the city of Ephesus. And that's also in the book of Acts, 
chapter 19, which is also mentioned in this book in the later uh, chapters in chapter 5. Um, but Paul, he, he receives a report from the people in Chloe's household about things that are taking place in the Corinthian church, things that are happening in Corinth, um, that he may receive a, a, a delegation from Corinth who also had asked some questions. You know, they were asking questions. Paul, how should we conduct ourselves here? Paul, what are the things that we need to do here, Paul? And Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians to respond to these reports. But because all of the time that Paul spent in Corinth and all the letters that he wrote to them, we know more about this church. We know more about the Corinthians, the church, the Christians in Corinth than we know more than any other church in the New Testament. He spent a lot of time here. This is one of his babies, all right? Now, Paul, if you guys know Paul, he was a church planner, all right? He's probably one of the greatest church planters in the history of humankind or the, uh, the history of Christianity, amen? But Paul, he, he says here, Paul, called to be an apostle. Now, at the outset of this letter, the very first words that Paul fearlessly declares here is his apostolic credentials, all right? And as is evident from 1 and 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians, Paul standing on the authority as an apostle um, was not so much appreciated by some of the Christians in Corinth. And if you guys remember Paul, Paul before Paul was actually Saul of Tarsus. You guys remember that? You remember um, he, he had gathered a few letters, a few things, documents, and he was on his way uh, to, to, uh, to Tarsus. All right? And he was on his way to deliver some um, things to the people in those places because there was a slaughter going to be taking place. You know, he was a, a persecutor of the Christians. He was a persecutor of those who have called themselves to be followers of Christ. And on his way to, uh, to Damascus, right, what happens? Jesus, he just invades his space in such a way that, you guys remember the account, right? He's on his way. He's with his assembly. And then this great light shines about him, and, and he's literally, he's blinded. He falls onto the ground, his face first. Then that voice comes. And it's Jesus saying, why are you persecuting me? And, and he even acknowledges who he's talking to at this point. He says, Lord. And so he's, as he's blinded, what happens? Man, he's led into this place. And there's a guy named of a name of Ananias there, just waiting to receive him because the Lord um, had spoken to him too about some of you know something that was going to take place with Paul coming into his place. And as he's blinded, Ananias prays for him. He then receives sight. He's now Paul. And what does it say there? It says in uh, in Acts nine that immediately. Not a couple weeks later, not I had a process what just happened, right? I had to chew on this, you know? No, it says immediately he went into the synagogues and preached Jesus Christ. Man, how amazing that is. And I just think to myself, man, wouldn't it be amazing if that's how our conversion story started? <laughs> right? And for many, it, it, it did start that way. For many, it, it, it was a fervent, on-fire conversion that took place in our hearts in such a way that we were just telling people about Jesus. It was just one of those things, right? Do you guys remember? Do you guys remember that moment? Do you guys remember those early years in your Christian walk? The very beginning of your conversion, the very beginning of you saying yes to Jesus. What proceeded in those next following weeks in your life? Do you guys remember? Remember. 
Remember that fire. Remember how you would tell people about Jesus. Remember how you would go to work and you, were, you, would, you wouldn't talk the same. You wouldn't act the same. You'd feel uncomfortable with certain things going on around your life. You know, you're more sensitive to the things of the Spirit. Amen? Things a lot easier offended you that didn't offend you in the past. And yet this is what happens to Paul. And he, it says that he is called to be an apostle. Called to be an apostle is, is literally, a, literally a called apostle. He is a called apostle. Jesus Christ himself says, you used to do this to me. When did I do it? You did it to them, you did it to me. But now this is who you're going to be. Amen? Amen. And Paul tells them just what kind of apostle he is. He's a called apostle. Paul knows that he's not one of the 12 apostles, which he wasn't, but he is on par with them because like them, he was chosen by the Lord. Amen? Now, he didn't walk with Jesus. You know, he wasn't one of the 12 selected. But man, he is as... History recounts probably the greatest, <laughs> amen, follower. One that shook things up. One that had both citizenships. You know, he was not just a Roman citizen, but man, he had a lot going on for him. And he, there's a lot of things that God can use him to do. And so he's in Corinth. And he's got a lot of things going on here. And it says, you know, so what is an apostle? What is an apostle of Jesus Christ? In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul deals more fully with what makes a person an apostle. However, we learn something just from the meaning of the ancient Greek word apostolos, which has the idea of a special ambassador. Amen. Paul, he was a special ambassador. He was an ambassador of Jesus Christ to the world and to the church, amen? Even in his introduction, Paul thinks about the critical issues he needs to communicate to the Corinthian Christians. And he, he thought carefully the things that he was going to share with them. Then it goes on to say, you know, Sosthenes. Who is this guy, Sosthenes? Sosthenes, our brother. He's not mentioned... Uh, very much at all in, in the Bible. But this man, Sosthenes, I believe, is the person that's mentioned in the book of Acts, chapter 18, verse 17. And, uh, and what he is, he's the head of the synagogue, right? He is the leader of the synagogue. And Paul was already there. Paul was already in Corinth. And he led it this charge, right? And he was bringing up these accusations, and the Roman leaders are like, hold on a second. Uh, have they, has he done anything like really wrong for us to believe your report? And so he's trying to go against, you know, this guy, Paul. Remember, Paul used to be just like Sosthenes was. Okay? So as this report wasn't taken seriously, it said, it's, the account says that he was taken out and he was beaten by the leaders. It was probably excommunicated. And I believe this is probably what happened is Paul sees this guy and thinks, man, this guy is just like me. And he takes him in. Now he's a brother. Amen. And there's another person in this story that we see later on that's also a similar situation that happens with him. And he's brought in. Amen. How many of you guys know that we are brought in in the same sense? He was beaten. Amen. And when Paul first came to Corinth, there was, there was another ruler of the synagogue. His name was Crispus. All right. Um, Crispus believed on the Lord, the Bible says, and all of his household was saved. And that's in Acts chapter 18. So he was literally fired or, or he quit his job to become a follower. All right. And that's what happened to Sosthenes. 
Amen? Uh, he ended up being the replacement of Crispus. And then the same thing happens to him. You know, the, the Jews try to persecute Paul. And Paul calls attention to this guy that's with him. He says, hey, Sosthenes, my brother, is with me. He's a follower. He's a Christian in Corinth. You know, and it was a common, it was common in the ancient world to dictate a letter to a scribe who, uh, who would write it all down. And this is probably what Sosthenes was for Paul. He was probably the one that was penning the letter as Paul was reading um, or as Paul was speaking it. And that was very common practice back in the day. So, to the church of God, which is in Corinth. Amen. To the church of God, which is in Corinth. To those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all who in every place call on the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. So the, to the church of God. Most people today associate the word church with what? These four walls. Amen. But in ancient Greek, the word for church was ecclesia, or ecclesiae. Um, and it wasn't a religious word, believe it or not. All right? It, it meant assembly. You guys know that we can assemble in many different places for many different reasons? And it doesn't necessarily mean the church. That's why if you see here, he says, to the church of God. Amen? To the church of God, to the assembly of the saints. You know, this Greek word has both a Gentile and a Jewish background. In its Gentile sense, it denotes chiefly the citizen assembly of a Greek city. But it is its Jewish usage that underlies it, it and it's used to denote the community of believers of Jesus Christ. You know, the term Church of God has Old Testament associations, especially in, uh, in ancient Greek translation of the Old Testament. And we see that, and it's in the book of Numbers, chapter 16, uh, chapter 20, in Deuteronomy, chapter 23. But because the church, because that name, church, because church was a secular term, Paul calls the gathering of Christians in Corinth, what? The church of God. You guys know we are the church of God? We are called the church of God. This isn't the gathering of the world, amen, but of God. It's the gathering of believers. And Paul doesn't only consider believers in Corinth to be the church of God, but believers in Palestine, believers all over the place as churches are being built, as churches are coming up, as you know, this is happening. There's other believers. It wasn't just Paul. Amen? It wasn't just Paul planting. There were many believers moving things and shaping things and, you know, moving in the, in the will of the Lord. You know, Corinth was one of the great cities of the ancient world. And a community very much like I would think of a city like San Diego, all right? Very rich, very nice, very expensive to live there. Anybody ever live in San Diego? Anybody like to visit San Diego? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That's one of my go-tos, by the way. Um, but it, it was a prosperous city. It was busy. It was growing. It, it also had a reputation of reckless pursuit and of pleasure. Corinth had a rich ethnic mix, and it was the center, center for sports, for government, military, business. Amen? When Paul came to Corinth in A.D. 50, the city was famous for hundreds of years before he was born. Ancient writers considered Corinth rich, prosperous, always great, and wealthy. 
And uh, the Romans destroyed Cor Corinth in four, uh, 146 B.C. Uh, by Julius Caesar, but it was also rebuilt a hundred years later. But many things made Corinth famous, all right? They had, you know, they made things out of, they made pottery, they made uh, things, that, you know, mixed with brass and gold and, and copper. I mean, it was a, it was a moving uh, it was a moving place. They had a lot going on there. You know, the, the city, it was world famous. When you think of a city that's world famous, does a city pop into your head? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, right? Probably multiple cities, right? There's things that, that they're, they're, it's a distinction between any other type of city, right? And um, famous athletes, Contestants known as, known as the Isthmian Games uh, would compete there, or the Olympian Games. You guys know the Olympics? Kind of started in this, it started in this area. Amen? Um, and these were held, uh, these games were held at the Temple of Poseidon in Corinth every two years. Athena, Apollo, Poseidon, Hermes, Isis, Serapis, Asclepius, among others, had temples in their honor. Amen? In this place of Corinth. But most prominently, the city of Corinth was known for its worship of the goddess Aphrodite. Now, Aphrodite, the goddess of sex. And this temple had at one time more than a thousand prostitutes, temple prostitutes and priestesses that had worked in that service. You know, and after the games, a lot of these contestants would go, and man, they would have a party. They would have a party in the temple. Corinth, it was a, a major city of business, especially because of its location. You know, there was two harbors there. Not just one harbor, there were two harbors there. So there was a lot of things being able to move and, you know, a lot of trade happening. Um, it, was, it was a booming place. And the Corinthian people, they were also known for their partying, their drunkenness, sexually immoral. They were well known in that Roman Empire. Amen. Amen by a term named that they were coined with uh, Corinthozami, which meant to live like a Corinthian. But everyone knew it really meant to be sexually out of control. All right? Um, Corinth's sexual immorality was so bad that it, I mean, you could probably think of like Las Vegas, <laughs> You know, when you think of a, a place that's sexually immoral, places that are booming, you know, you got Los Angeles, you have uh, probably New York. Think of those types of places. I mean, that's how much structure was going on here, but there was a lot of loose living happening as well. They had material possessions. They were very prosperous, but they were morally bankrupt. They were corrupt. Notice the contrast here. The church of God is what? That is good. Which is in Corinth. To the church of God, which is in Corinth. Something bad, right? Something good, the church of God, which is in Corinth. Man, when you're in Corinth, you know there's all this happening in Corinth. But understanding the tension between the church and the city is important, amen, to understanding this letter, to understanding 1 Corinthians. The bottom line is this, the church, is it influencing the city? Or is the city influencing the church? That's the real question, amen? And that goes for all of us. Not necessarily is your city influencing 
you as a Christian, but what is influencing you? Does the Lord of all creation influencing your life in such a way that it's influencing others to turn to him? Is your conduct, amen, in such a way that it is causing others to question their conduct? How are we living our lives? And Paul, I mean, he's, he's showing so much grace to these people here. He's saying, church, man, you're in this wicked city, but there's some things going on here. And we're going to address them. We're going to get to them as we get on uh, throughout this letter here. But don't you know that God has so much grace towards you? And how much grace does God have towards us? Amen. So where is the influence? Are we impacting others? Are we being the influence, amen, or is the influence external, apart from Christ? That's what we need to consider, amen. Then it goes on to say, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints. And, and Paul continued his description of the Corinthian Christians here. The word sanctified in saints, amen, communicates the same idea of being set apart, set apart from the world unto God. You know, when you think of, um, of you know, the word saints, some people may probably in their mind go to, you know, maybe like the Catholic Church, right? Um, to achieve sainthood, you know, you got to do certain things. And, and, uh, and, and that's, that's, not, that's not the case. That's not how, it was, how it, this is meant to be, you know. Uh, or, you know, if you just did enough, you know, to achieve sainthood. No, you're, you're, you're called a saint the moment, amen, that Christ comes into your life. Amen. Why? Because to be called a Christian means that you put on Jesus, amen, that you, uh, you die to yourself, amen, you, you die to the flesh and you put on Christ. You are now a new creation, amen, to live a different way. So it's being set apart from the world and unto God. Notice the words here, to be. To be, amen? They're, they're inserted in there. And the Corinthians were called saints. They, they weren't called to be saints. They're called saints, amen? So there's much here in 1 Corinthians that is, uh, that's unflattering to the Christians in Corinth. They're shown to have at times moral morality problems, doctrinal problems, um, church government problems, spiritual gift problems, church service problems, authority problems. It might be easy to say for us to think that they weren't even saved. Amen. But it says they were called saints. You know, just imagine this church. All right. In this church. There's people sitting on the, on the right side and on the left side that were suing each other, taking each other to court. You know, there were factions, there were divisions, there were, you know, there, were, there was a group in there, all right, that we, we like to consider the remnant, amen. There were people that were really on fire, for the Lord, and then there were those that just were kind of the Sunday goers, you know, they just kind of, they, they're in and out, and they don't really engage themselves, they just like, oh, that, that's my check mark, right? My, my, my monthly goal, I went to church. Then there were those, I mean, even in this church, man, they were, oh, you know, they, there was a, a, there was a young man that was sleeping with his mother-in-law. And in that church, people were like, that's great. Man, we're, we're, 
we're so progressive, right? Cancel culture. Yes, this is good. Now, why? Why was that happening? Because they were so used to the way the world was. And it was infiltrating the church. Amen? So Paul, he comes back and he's saying, hey, guys, brothers and sisters, you're called saints. What are you doing? Even apart from all that, they still were called. How many guys are so happy that God doesn't give up on us? <laughs> Man, because how, how often do we live loosely? How often do we do things that, you know, are very questionable? How often are we trying to live under the radar? Ain't nothing hidden from his sight, though. Amen? But here are these guys, man. Because it all happened in this region. It all happened in here. Then he goes on and he, he, he continues with it. And he says, grace to you and peace from our God and Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, this greeting here, it, it included grace and peace, amen? And it's typical of Paul's letters. When you read Paul's letters, grace and peace to you, brothers. Grace and peace to you. And it, and it draws, back, uh, draws from both Greek and Jewish customs. Paul uses this exact phrase five other times in the New Testament, amen? Grace is always first. Peace is always second. And this is due to the fact that grace is our source of peace. Amen? Without grace, there can be no peace. But when grace is our peace, it's inevitable that it's going to follow. Amen? The Lord Jesus Christ. You know, Paul will often more than 17 times in this letter refer to Jesus as the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, and it's good, though. It's good because he, he, is, he is recalling what that title means. Remember when his conversion happened? What did he say? Lord. You know, he recognized who he was dealing with. He recognized who he, who he was about to encounter here and, and was going to change his life. And, man, when that happened, again, he immediately, it was an, an immediate response it was an immediate change of heart. It was an immediate, man, I wish that, that we could have, I'm not saying I wish that we can be blinded, right? Like he was and have that type of experience. But to have something happen in our lives that, that there's no denying who you are, man. You are so real. Not just, I just hear about you all the time. No, but to be, really experience him. How many of you guys have ever had a Jesus encounter? Amen. A, a, kind of like an earth-shaking encounter with him. And he knows what this means. He knows who he serves. He knows the title of the Lord. Amen. He's Yahweh. He is Jehovah. You know, there's, there's, there's so many in this city, amen, so many gods and goddesses, amen, that people served, that people erected statues to. That's why I believe another reason why he constantly says, the Lord, it's him. He is the only one. Amen? Yeah, how many statues, how many gods do we erect in our lives? Is he the Lord of your life? Amen. Is he the Christ in your life? So here again, 
Paul, he's dealing with a lot. He's got a lot that's going on with this church. But man, they haven't lost hope. And I think about the church today in, in the state that it's in, in the position that it's in currently. Currently, there's, and I'm, 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 I'm glad to see people here today, amen. And I'm glad to see that your hearts are drawn towards coming into the house of the Lord. And yes, you know, again, we're doing as much as possible to be as safe as possible, as you all can see. Um, but man, how many people's, how many Christians, how many that Paul would even consider here, if he was here speaking with us today, saying, you guys are called to be saints. What are you doing? Why are you separating yourselves? And it's a scary thing to think that the church that we're living in today, this time that we're living in right now, where there are many that are, man, their, their hearts are really being tested. And I'm not saying by any means that you coming to church proves <laughs> that you are truly, you know, a follower of Christ. No. Man, I don't know how many times I said just because you go to McDonald's, it don't make you a cheeseburger. <laughs> right? And just because you come to church, it doesn't make you a follower of Christ. It means you came to church. Amen? Or you came to the building. And Paul, again, talking to the church here, <clears throat> he knows, he knows what he came out of. He knows that there's got to be a fire about him. Amen? Remember where you have fallen from. Never forget that. Remember where you have came out of. Amen? Amen? It's a healthy thing to reflect on that. You guys know that? Like, what did Jesus take me out of? Oh, I don't ever want to remember my past. No, don't live your past. Amen? But remember what he pulled you out of. Remember the pit that you were in and the condition you were in and, and what he did in your life. Compare it to last year. Compare it to two years ago. And if you're truly growing in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ... Amen. It, it, it is a, an evolving faith. Amen. It's happening. It's, it's, you're pursuing him. You're growing in him. You're, you're getting stronger by the day. Amen. You're, you're not compromising in certain areas anymore. You're not doing certain things you used to do. What does that look like in your life? How does that picture look like? Does it look worse than it did two years ago? Amen? Does it look worse than it did last week? And as Paul reminds this church in Corinth, hey, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, you're called. You guys know what sanctification means? Amen? You guys realize what it means to be sanctified? It's a cleansing. It is a, you know, you're being washed daily in his word. You're, you're, man, don't take this for granted. Don't take his word for granted. Don't take, you know, when you're, when you're up in the morning and the first thing that you, you go to is your, and a brother had shared this yesterday, the first thing you go to is your Twitter page or, or your Facebook app, you know, and that Bible app is right next to that, but you're like, oh, you know, I'll do that next, uh, I'll do that later. Man, that, that shows a lot of where we are. Amen. Pick up his word. Chew on it. Devour it. Believe me, you will grow. You're, you're, you will grow 
and you will become sanctified. Amen? In the process. You will be sanctified in the process. He calls us to be saints. This letter isn't just to the church of Corinth. Amen? It's for us today. It's an application for us today. Yes, we need to see what happened here. We need to see where God was taking these people and what he was doing through Paul, the apostle. But man, you know, do we apply the word of God in our lives? Or do we just want to hear a teaching? Or do we just want to hear, you know, oh, that happened back then. You know, I don't think that's applicable for me. No, the entire word is applicable for you. Amen? It's all for our benefit. But God shows us grace. And Paul, he starts this letter off in such a way, you know, where he knows where he's at. He knows who he's talking to. He knows these people have it hard. He knows it's not easy. He knows there's the church is, you know, it's in disarray. He knows that it's not perfect. He knows it's looking pretty bad. But yet, he comes to give them an encouraging word. You know, and just as in the, in the seven churches that we went through yesterday, you know, Jesus himself is speaking to those churches. Amen? I mean, it's, it's, it's in red. <laughs> we got to know when it's in red, you better pay attention. It's Jesus himself speaking. And as he spoke to those seven churches, he gave them all something to chew on. And to every single one of those churches, it wasn't too late. Amen? For every single one of those churches, there was still a chance. There was still hope. There was still, you know, you can still get it right. Start serving. Start living righteously. Amen? And how much opportunity do we have? You know, we are in our, our Western culture, right? Our Western mindset and the way the church thinks in the West is just lazy. It's a lazy mindset. It's a lazy mindset. It's a put it in the microwave, see it get hot really quick. Western mindset. Oh, I'm not going to go to, I'll just watch. I'll just watch it on TV. Oh, I'm, I'm too busy to serve. Oh, somebody else will do that. I mean, they already have people there. Well, doesn't so-and-so already do this? I mean, I mean, they got seven other ministries that they do, but why not? That's why they're there. And we, we sit in the background, right? And just watch. We watch as it just all goes by. In the middle of all that, Jesus is there and he's saying, man, plug in. Plug in. Plug in. And yes, I'm using this opportunity to share apart from this, you know, that, hey, we need to plug in. Yes, as you all well know, um, next month, how you guys can say, um, April 1st. Say April 1st. All right. April 1st is coming. All right. The month of April is coming. And in April, we are going to start, we're going to launch a few um, home groups. Amen. On Wednesday nights. Ah, you know, Wednesday is my time to, you know, it's hump day. You know, I got now, I'm so tired because it's hump day. You know, it's a, it, it is a tragedy, really, to think that way about being part of something that God is doing. You want to know why people don't go to Wednesday services? You want to know why people, you know, randomly select to go on, you know, a holiday to church? It's because their fire is out. And if it's not out, it's about to. You 
you know, there's a few groups that we're going to start again on Wednesday. And I encourage, you know, I've been given some names and I'm going to be communicating with you folks that are going to be hopefully coming over to the house, amen, to have some fellowship, to get into the word, amen, to, to grow. And the whole point of it isn't because, hey, we just want to do something else. There's so many things that, we're, that we can do, right? There's something else to do. No, it's not something else to do. It's like, man, where do we see the church and what condition do we see it in and, and how can we get involved? Amen. How many of you guys want to get involved with the Lord? Man, it's like real reserved right now, right? I mean, the atmosphere right now is just like, ugh. Okay, no, and, and I speak to myself, too, trust me. You know, yeah, I got other things going on, too. Believe me, I do. You know, you're not the only busy person, amen? We all have busy, you know, we all have time, and that's the one thing we all have of, amen, is time. But how are we using our time, amen? What are we doing with that time that the Lord gives us, amen? Are we pouring into him? Are we allowing him to pour into us? Or is it like, eh, you know, I'm busy all week. Sunday morning will come around. I'll spend about an hour at church. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'll, I'll just show up when the preaching is about to start. And then I'll, I'll leave before it's all done. That way I don't have to get involved. I don't have to, you know, engage with people. But I still want to be a part. That is not how Jesus, that's not what Jesus Christ died for, amen? He died for people that would come to him and have a willingness and an openness about them to say yes. Yes, Lord, I'm here. How do you want to use me? You think Jesus Christ died for the world just so the world can go to heaven? Yeah, he did that, okay? But if you're not growing in the midst of that time period, amen, it, it's a weight, right? It's like, it's like the, the children of, um, of Israel as they were in the, headed to the promised land. You know, they, they had a wait period. They had to cross over the Jordan. They had to, and, and what were they doing in the middle of the, all that, in that waiting period before they got to the promised land? I'm going to tell you what, there was a lot of them that complained. Oh, you know, they take so long at church. Oh, they, oh, they, oh man, I don't want to do that. Why don't they do this instead? Oh, why don't they start this ministry? Or how come they're not asking me, you know? in the wait, and in the wait, and in the wait. Things are still happening, but in the wait, what are you doing? Where do I find myself? Where do I plug in? And as Paul has called the Corinthian church to, man, fellowship with him, it was to get out of the way they used to live. To get them away from, man, I know the city you're in, I know your environment, I know the workplace, I know, you know, the environment that you, you find yourself in constantly, it's hard, but man, persevere, man, you know, start operating in those gifts, and we're going to get into that in the next, you know, few weeks here about the gifts that God gives the church, about the gifts that God gives his saints, Amen and how to operate in them. God has gifted every single one of us with, with things that I can't do, amen, that you can do. Or things that you can't do that I can do. But man, when it all works together in conjunction, amen, with, in unity, you know, we're called to be united. And the only way you can be united is if, if people are 
on that same track with you. You know, don't just visit the train station and never get on. Amen? So let's stand up and pray. Dear Lord, I thank you, God, for your word tonight, this morning. I thank you, Lord, that even though the church of Corinth had so many things going on because people are in the church, because people come with things that weigh them down, Lord, but yet you still use Paul to encourage the church of Corinth to step out of those boundaries, to be reminded of who they are and why Jesus came. And Lord, may it remind us this morning of who you are and why you came into our lives, why you came into our homes, why you came into this building. God, why you desire to live in our hearts. Lord, you call us just like you called Paul. You call us, Lord. We may not all be apostles, we may all be prophets, God, but you have given to each one certain abilities, certain things, God, certain giftings, Lord, that you want us to operate in. But Lord, we can't do any of that. We can't do any of that if we don't make you a priority in our lives. May we be reminded this morning, God, of the priority of placing you first. Remind us, Lord God, where we came from and how things were then. Just as a reminder, not to live in the past, but to remind us that, man, you know, I was on fire at one point in my life. Or even help us to recall those opportunities, those occasions, Lord, where you were moving in us mightily because, one, we were giving ourselves to you. Because we were desiring, Lord God, to see you move in our lives. And yet for many of us, we've come to a place now where we see ourselves as In my, it's, it's probably it's not even we're comfortable. We might call it we're you know we're just comfortable, or we're being lazy, or. But God, it goes deeper than that. It goes so much more deeper than that. Lord, to the point where, we become, spiritually bankrupt. Help us to turn to you. Help us to look to you, God. Help us to regain that fire, to regain, Lord God, that, that drive. And if there's anybody in here or even watching online, and you might say to yourself, you know what? That's me. I've lost my drive. But I'm still here. And I'm telling you, if you're still here, if you're still watching, make that decision to say, Lord, I want to put you first. I want you to move in me. I want you to use me. I want to glorify your name. I want to do so much for you because you have done so much for me. And even all that I can possibly do for you doesn't even amount to even a little bit. Because we can never repay the debt that we owe. So Lord, help us this morning to press on, to move forward, to not become lethargic, Lord God, any longer, to get out of that comfort zone, to get out of that place of 
conformity where things and people and mindsets of this world are shaping us, Lord, instead of you and your word. Shape us, Lord. Mold us. Help us to be that clay, Lord God, that is pliable in your hands. Make us what you want us to be, Lord. Lord, we give ourselves to you. And if you're here this morning and you need prayer, just you can come to the front and we'll pray for you. And if you're there just watching online, just continue to pray and ask God to move in your life and tell somebody about it. You know, because I, I know one thing, when you do make a decision, when you make a decision to change things up, but you don't share that vision, you don't share that drive with somebody, it'll probably, for many, it just, it just kind of dies out. If you want to serve, tell somebody, hey, you know what, I wanna, how can I serve? It doesn't have to be specific. Maybe it is. Maybe you know exactly where God has called you. Are you willing to step out of that and say, yes, Lord, I'm here, I'm ready, I want to be used, I want to be, I'm your vessel right here, right now. Amen. For the rest of us, let's just continue to just pray and ask God to reveal things in our hearts. You know, what are the motives of why I am here What's the motive behind my heart of why I'm here today? Is it because I haven't been here for a while? Or is it because, man, I desire more of God? Amen. Let's worship the Lord. spread out the skies over empty space said let there be light to a dark and formless world your light was born you spread out your arms over empty hearts Said, let there be light to a dark and hopeless world. Your son was born. You made the world and saw that it was good. You sent your only son for you, our good. What a wonderful maker, what a wonderful Savior, and how majestic your whispers, and how humble your love. With a strength like no other And the heart of a father And how majestic your whispers What a wonderful God I has fully seen how beautiful the cross and we have only heard the faintest whispers of how great you are you made the world and saw that it was good 
You sent your only son for you are good. And what a wonderful maker. What a wonderful Savior. And how majestic your whispers. And how humble your love. With a strength like no other. And the heart of a father. And how majestic your whispers. What a wonderful God. And what a wonderful maker. What a wonderful Savior, and how majestic your whispers, and how humble your love, with a strength like no other. And the heart of a father, how majestic your whispers, what a wonderful God. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted, you were condemned. And I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted, you were condemned. And I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true, and it's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you, and I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted, you were condemned, and I'm alive and well. Your spirit is within me because. You died and rose again. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true. And it's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you. You are my king. You are my king. Oh, Jesus. 
Jesus, you are my King. You are my King. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true, and it's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you. You. Jesus, you are my King. You are my waters, earth, and sky. The heavens are your tabernacle. Glory to the Lord on high. God of wonders beyond our galaxies. You are holy. Holy, the universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy, Lord of heaven and earth. Lord God of wonders beyond our galaxies, you are holy, holy. The universe declares your majesty, you are holy, holy. To the Lord of heaven and earth, hallelujah. To the Lord of heaven and earth, hallelujah. To the Lord of heaven and time God of wonders with one voice God of wonders beyond our galaxies you are holy holy the universe declares your majesty you are holy Holy Lord of heaven and earth, 
God for the church. Even in the state that it's in right now, I mean, I thank God for you guys. Amen. I thank God for every single one of you guys that are here, that are watching online, those who haven't been able to come for, you know, X amount of I thank God for you guys all the time, you know, because God has a purpose. You know, God has a plan for us. And, uh, and I know he's going to see it through. Amen. I know, you know, times may be a little bit different right now, but even in the times that we're living in, I know Throughout church history, times changed. Amen. They went through difficult times, um, but they still persevered. Amen. They still endured. Amen. And may we endure. And may we persevere. May we, you know, grow out of this, um, out of this place. Amen. And uh, and see God do some great things. Amen. Amen. So let's pray. Father, thank you again for your word. Thank you, God, for the fellowship, Lord God, that uh, we're able to be taking part of, Lord, as brothers and sisters in Christ. And Lord God, I just pray that as we leave this place, that we would not leave with the same mindset that we may have came in with, Lord, if it was a, a mindset that just bogged down with things. But Lord God, may we be encouraged, Lord, just as you used Paul to encourage the church in Corinth. And even though they were in a place that was hard and it was difficult, that Lord, you still called them. And you still call us help us, Lord God, to walk that out, to live that out, not just this week, not just this month, but God, the next few years, the next 10 years, until you tarry, Lord. We just thank you, we give you, again, the rest of this day.